Hey everyone, this is Daniel for Ruck the JVM, and in this video I'm going to demonstrate an example of Apache Peco features with a little project that can execute code remotely. So it's a distributed system where you can send in a piece of code as a string, and the distributed system executes that code in any language that is supported by the project, and it gives you back the result. Now, this is a little bit different than the uh, tutorials where I write code from scratch because I'm going to demonstrate a GitHub project from one of my students, Nika, and you can find the GitHub repository in the description of this video, as well as the article he wrote breaking down this project into its constituent parts and explaining the design decisions that went inside this hobby project. So this hobby project is a distributed system using Peco. So it uses Peco HTTP, Peco streams, and Peco typed actors with clustering. So it demonstrates pretty much all the major features of the um, open source version of Akka's toolkit. So I'm going to show you how you can uh, work through this project, how you can deploy it, and I'm also going to outline the code features and some lessons that you can also take away. So this is as educational as pretty much everything else on Rock the JVM. So you can feel free to pause the video and clone this GitHub repository because I'm going to walk you through the code that's inside this GitHub repository, obviously with Nika's blessing. Now this video will assume that you have some basic knowledge about either Akka or Apache Peco. I've done a bunch of videos here on the Rock the JVM channel, and I've also published a bunch of courses about Akka or Peko. These come into the same bundle because the concepts are the same and the code is almost identical. So I'm going to leave a link in the description of this video if you want to check this out. I've uh, published a long series of very long courses with some practical examples of pretty much everything you need to know about Peko actors, streams, HTTP, the kind of stuff that we're going to explore in this video. In any case, the project looks something like this. First, I'm going to walk you through the code, which, as you can tell, under source main Scala, we don't have that much code. I'm going to walk you through the architecture first and how the code is laid out. And I'm also going to show you how you can run this project and uh, try it out for yourself. So the main application is here. Under source main Scala, the application is called Brain Drill. So this is the name of the project. And the Brain Drill application works in the following way. This is a clustered system. So this is an actor system where the guardian actor spawns up some worker actors on different nodes. So first we have a master node and a bunch of worker nodes. For example, n times worker node. And on the master node, we have one actor that delegates work to one of the worker nodes. So the way that the system is supposed to work is that the master node will receive an HTTP request on the master node. So this will also store an HTTP server. So the HTTP server will receive an HTTP request. For example, I'm going to have an uh, HTTP post at uh, localhost 8080 slash lang slash Python with a bunch of code as the payload. For example, I don't know, print hello Python hello Python, like this. So the code is in raw string form. Now the HTTP server will unpack the HTTP entity, take its payload, wrap a little message for the actor that is kind of like the master actor. And this master actor will receive a code execution message for this particular string. So this master actor will receive its first message, first message. Now, this master actor will then delegate this first message or the code execution message to one of the worker nodes. So every worker node will have a worker, which itself will have m, let's say another uh, variable m, times worker actors. Now, in Aka slash Peco parlance, this is called a router. A router receives a message from some sort of exterior, and the router will simply forward that message to one of the actors that actually do the work, the actor will uh, send back a reply to the router, which in turn forwards the reply back to whoever sent it the request in the first place. So this is in broad strokes the architecture. I'm not going to bore you with the details. I hope the code will speak for itself. So the master node along with the master actor is called this cluster system. So the actor system that we're going to spin up contains a bunch of nodes and the PECO cluster will take care of the communication between the uh, worker nodes in the machine. We are going to have under source main resources in application.conf. We have the configurations necessary for the cluster to work. And in particular, we have remote and cluster. These are the sections in application.conf that tell PECO how the nodes are supposed to communicate with one another. We don't really um, 
have to care about that. And then we have actor system with the behavior designed by the cluster system. So this is the first thing that we're going to dive into. The cluster system is an actor system that is going to be spun up on every machine in the architecture, both on the worker nodes and on the master node, which is why we have the role here, the role of the machine, which is either worker or master. I'm going to talk about master first. So if the node in question has the role master, we're going to take a bunch of constants like the actor system and a bunch of other things necessary to run any sort of computation. And this is the crux of the master actor. First, we're going to spin up the routers necessary on the worker nodes. So this creates worker actors on the worker nodes. In aka slash peco parlance, this is called a group router. And we talk about group routers in detail in the Aka Typed Essentials course or Aka slash Peco Typed Essentials course. So we have two kinds of routers. One is called uh, group router and one is called pool router. Group routers are just actors that we already have. So the Peco cluster will create these actors on the remote machines and we simply group them or tick them by name and we create a router out of those so that we forward messages to either one. So this is the structure that we use. We say context.spawn and this creates an actor that only has the job of forwarding any message to either one of the actors in question. So that forwards messages to any of the other actors inside. So these are the worker nodes and all of them are considered identical. And so whenever I send a message, any one of these actors can pick it up. Obviously there is the routing logic, which is called with round robin routing, which means that whenever I send a message, every one of them will be picked in turn. And then besides the group router itself, I also have the HTTP server that I mentioned earlier. So this is unrelated to the actors part. This is the entire Aka slash Peko HTTP server that uh, has the route at slash lang slash whatever. So we have here slash lang slash Python slash Ruby slash JavaScript slash whatever language we want to support. And then we parse the entity as a string. We take any one of the actors and these are the worker nodes, worker routers. So we have worker router as random.shuffle and this is uh, a load balancer in Nika's terms. And then we expect a reply from one of these worker nodes and uh, we're going to dive into how those worker nodes actually run up the code. And then the response is going to be fetched back to whoever issued the HTTP request. So this is a post at localhost slash lang slash whatever, Python, for example, and we get the response after the code execution at the end. This is not rocket science. And we simply create the HTTP server, which is in charge of all these requests. And that is it. This is the master node. And these are the two big things that are happening inside the master node. Inside the worker node, whenever I create a worker node, I expect a message from the master node. So the master is in charge of creating one message and sending that to one of the worker nodes. And the way that we're going to do that is by um, fetching the entity as a string. So this is the payload from the HTTP request. And we create one of these messages. It's called start execution using the code in question, the language. So this is the string. And this is the identity function that gives the response back to myself. And then I'm going to map the value of the execution res the result. So this is the reply that I get from the worker node. The execution result is the value that is the output of the code. So it gets back to that. And then the response is going to be this async response, which just contains the string after running the code. That's it. Now, the important thing is that whenever I receive an HTTP response, I issue this new message to one of my worker nodes. So this is the point that we need to start our analysis of the worker node. Now in the worker node, there's a bunch of boilerplate necessary to create this actor. And every actor, as you probably know already, is defined in terms of its behavior, which says, what kind of stuff can you do depending on the kind of messages that you receive? And uh, this worker node needs to register itself into the ACA cluster so that the ACA cluster can talk to it. And the behavior itself is called routers.pool. So inside every worker node, as I mentioned earlier, we spin up m times worker actors. This is in pe peco parlance, 
a pool router. So we have behavior is equal to routers.pool, number of workers. We have, I think, 50 by default. So this is internal parallelism on the same JVM. So we're here inside one of the worker JVMs and we spin up 50 worker actors. And every worker actor is described by this behavior. The important bit is the worker. So this is the behavior that we're after. We're going to dive into that shortly. So this is the actual actor that does the work. So does the code execution. And we have a behavior.supervised just in case the worker failed to execute the code, we need to restart it because we don't want the actors to die if somebody ran some stupid code that didn't run. So we want to give a reply to the user that their code didn't work and also restart the actor, which is why we have this behavior is supervised. And whenever we have on failure, which means that this worker failed for some reason, we simply restart the actor so that our system is still intact. Now, the next place where we need to take a look is the worker actor. So the worker actor is described by its behavior, obviously. The worker file is first or first contains a bunch of constants with a bunch of languages that we support. So Java, Python, Ruby, Perl, JavaScript, and PHP. No Scala, unfortunately. But this map just describes what kind of executor or what kind of application we need to run on the file or on the code that we send to this particular actor. So for example, here on Java, we run the Java command. The file extension is .java, and OpenJDK 17 is the Docker container that we're going to run the code in. So the JVM that is going to run this code will start a fresh Docker container for OpenJDK 17. So it's going to do a Docker build, and then we have uh, OpenJDK 17, and then run we're going to have java-cp dot, or maybe without the class path, uh, $file.java, and that's going to be it, um, and probably with a bunch of other commands. So what this worker actor is going to do is going to run this particular command at runtime based on the operating system API. So it's going to build the OpenJDK 17 for Java, for example, really locally, and run that particular command inside that Docker container, and it's going to destroy that Docker container. Now, it may sound quite dramatic and quite overheady, but in practice, the Docker buildup and teardown is actually quite quick, and we're gonna see that shortly. So in short, what this worker actor will do is it will take the code that we're going to send to it as a string, store a file in a Docker container, and then run the Java command or whatever uh, application is supposed to run inside that Docker container and then tear down that Docker container. That's the general gist of it. And we have a bunch of applications for different programming languages. Here we then have some data structures that will describe the protocol that this actor is going to function in. And the message is called in and we have two messages, start execution and then execution result. So we have start execution. This is the command that the worker is going to receive. And execution result is what I receive when my own actors reply back to me. And I'm going to tell you about how this worker actor is designed. So as I mentioned earlier, every actor is described by its behavior. And its behavior is usually in uh, PECO uh, built by an apply method. So in a object, which in this case, the object is worker, we have an apply method that takes a that returns a behavior which is typed in the message that this actor is supposed to receive. And the construct, the, mo the most general construct in behaviors in PECO is behaviors.setup, which gives you a rich data structure called context, which gives you the capability of creating smaller child actors. And the behavior that is going to be returned here is behaviors.receive message. Now, there's a bunch of machinery happening here. I'm going to point you to the relevant bits of the code. So the start execution is the most most important message that this actor is going to receive. So this is the message that the master actor is going to give this worker actor with the code in the language and the actor that this a worker is going to reply to when it gets a result. And in terms of the language, if we have the language, one of the languages that we support, we just create a new actor called a file handler. So the first thing that this actor is going to do is going to store the code 
as a string in a file. And the actor is called file handler. And the command is going to be uh, store this code in the file and execute the file. That's the command that this file handler in prepare file is supposed to do. So this is the most important command that's going to be issued by this actor to store this code and then execute the file. And the information in this message, so prepare file is just a message, a data structure, and the name of this message is lang dollar, and this is the name of the file. So random number for avoiding file uh, uh, collisions. So it's storing, for example, Python dollar one two three dot pi something like that where we have a random number generator here, and this file is going to be stored locally in a Docker container. We have the compiler, so this is going to be the Python application that's going to run that file. The Docker image is, I think it's Python. This sucker. So we have Python here. So Python as a Docker container. The code is going to be the actual string. So this print uh, hello Python. Hello Python, assuming I can type properly. And the reply to actor is going to be context.self when this file handler has finished executing the file. And if we don't get any message, then we have execution failed. Okay, now we're going to have two possible replies from that execution, which is called execution succeeded and execution failed. In both cases, we log the success or the failure of that execution. And we simply uh, tell the worker router back the result of the computation. So we bubble the message up. So bubble up the message to the worker actor, and then to the master. Now, the kind of stuff that you see here with apply after every case is that at the end of every behavior, you need to return a new behavior. So the actor is supposed to transform after receiving any message into a possibly new behavior, which is why we have this apply, which is the new behavior, the new behavior after receiving uh, this message. But uh, I've talked about the uh, actor typed API in uh, one of the other videos here on the Rock the JVM channel. So all of these apply methods are simply the creation of a new behavior after receiving one of these messages. Okay, so the most important thing is to create a file and execute it. The most important actor that's being uh, created here is the file handler, which is our next stop. Now, as before, this file handler has a protocol, which in this case, we have an enum. We have prepare file, file prepared and file preparation failed. These two are replies and this is the command. So this is the command from the worker and file prepared and uh, file preparation failed. These are responses. As before, this actor is described in terms of its uh, behavior and the behavior is created by an apply method. And we have behaviors.receive and behaviors.receive is just a partial function essentially where we have a message match and we have these options. First of all, the command, when we are asked to prepare and execute the code, so prepare and execute the code, we're doing the following. First of all, we're creating the file path at slash data slash name, and the name has been generated before, as I showed you earlier, and we create the source file on the file system, and this is an asynchronous operation. And after this future is completed, I'm going to give a message to myself depending on how the, the future was completed. So if we have a success, then I'm sending this message to myself. Otherwise, I'm sending this other message to myself, uh, noting the output of the file preparation phase. So if we get a file prepared, then the file has already been written inside the Docker container and I'm ready to execute it. If I get a file preparation failed, then this is a code execution failure, which I'm going to bubble up to the worker actor. So if we get a file preparation failed, for example, we have a log and we have the reply to actor saying worker.execution failed and uh, the reason why. Okay. So if the file preparation failed, I'm going to stop this actor and uh, after that, the worker will be notified. Now in the happy path, this is the happy path. So we have the case for file prepared. If the file was prepared, so at this point, we have the file. At this point, we're going to do a bunch of things. First, I'm going to create a new actor. 
so new actor, new child actor, to run the file, which is called code executor. This is the line that spins the new child actor. I'm going to watch the child for termination in case the code itself yielded some kind of exception or ran unsuccessfully. I'm going to destroy the code executor and I'm going to watch for its death and I'm going to receive that particular signal and uh, we have the warning here so that we can debug what happened. Okay, and then I'm going to tell this code executor this particular message to execute this particular code. So this is just a data structure. These, the compiler, file, docker, image, and reply to, these are all, all strings except the reply to, which is an actor reference. So after I'm creating the new child actor to run the file, tell the child to run the file. And this is the line that does that. I'm sending the message called execute and this is just a data structure to uh, take the compiler as a string. So this is the application, file, docker image, and the actor ref so that the code executor child actor can reply back to me and then to the uh, master actor so that we can bubble up the reply to the user. So this is the general logic of the um, file preparation actor. The code executor itself is the last stage. So this is in charge with actually running the operating system command. And we have a bunch of uh, constants here. For example, in the case where the code is too big, where the reply is too big, I'm going to uh, trim the output or issue an exception in case we have any sort of um, uh, out of bounds there. We have the in, which is an enum describing the protocol of this actor. So we have execute. This is the command. And the other three are responses or results. And with this too large output, this is an exception that will kill this actor if it grows too large. So we are putting some bounds inside the Docker container. As always, this actor is described by its behavior, and the behavior is built out of the apply method. So we have behaviors.receive, and this is a glorified pattern match in which the message itself is matched against the execute which is the command and all the possible outputs. And if we receive the execute, that is from the parent actor that we just described earlier, we're logging, executing some submitted code. And this is essentially a command in the operating system. So we have timeout dash dash signal equals sig kill to docker dash dash rm dash dash u limit. You get the idea. So all of these command line tokens here are going to be placed in sequence. And this is going to be run as a single operating system command on the Docker container. Now this particular method run is just a wrapper over a future which calls system.runtime.exec. And the exec here is really a JVM, an old Java API for running arbitrary commands on the operating system based on the JVM. So this is, as uh, you can possibly tell here under Java, so sys runtime is just wrapper over Java API and this runs asynchronously in a future. So we're running this thing in a future. And if one, once we get the result, we have the success source and error source, we get the input and output streams and we're zipping them and we're deciding what to do with the output. And I'm sending the message to myself called in.executed depending on whether the uh, output was a success or an error. And there's a bunch of machinery here to process all these futures. So I'm saying context pipe to self. So I'm putting the result of the future back to me. And in case we get a success, I'm logging the success out. And once the process has been exited with anything other than these codes, then we have a success. And the codes 127, 137, and 139, these are just codes to tell us whether the process was killed because it exited the timeout or the memory usage in, inside the Docker container. So we have some, to put some bounds inside the Docker container. And for anything else, I'm uh, signaling a message back to the worker that we have execution succeeded. And uh, the output of the executed command is going to be piped back to the worker. So this is just the standard output of the process, which I'm capturing as a string. So this is just a string uh, piped from the output of the process. And I'm, I'm putting the response back to the worker, which bubbles up to the master actor, which bubbles up to the user of the HTTP request. So this is in turn how the um, code execution actor works. So back to the architecture here of brain drill, 
I think I have a compiling error because I don't have a new line here in Skull 3. So every worker actor is going to have a worker, which delegates the task to a file. What was that called? File handler. File handler. And then to a code executor. And then the code executor pipes the response back to the worker or the file handler pipes the response back to the worker depending on success and failure. So this is the path of the actors. Now let me show you how we can run this actual project. So Nico was kind enough to give us a script to run this entire thing. It's called deploy.shell. So this is a basic shell script that will build all the Docker images and every Docker image is described by the Docker file and the entire cluster is described by Docker Compose YML. So the Docker Compose YML contains a bunch of services. One is called master and one is called worker. I think we can have multiple workers here, but he created uh, three uh, different workers of the same type. And the environment variables are cluster IP, cluster port, and cluster role, after which Akka will figure out the role and then spin up the appropriate actor based on this particular string. So we have four different Docker containers, one for master and three for workers, and every one of them will work on the Docker file. And all of the nodes will start and actually do the exact same thing. So we're starting from this image, which contains Scala and SBT, just runs an update and copies the entire project. So everything that you see here in the project is going to copy on the Docker container and it's going to run SBT clean assembly, which will build the application locally on all of the Docker containers in parallel. And every Docker container will run this command, java-jar target scala 341 brain drill.jar, which is the entire project. So every worker and every master node, so all the nodes in the cluster will run exactly the same command and it will build the project in exactly the same way. The only difference is going to be made by the cluster role. So this particular item here as an environment variable in the Docker containers will tell what the kind of role that every node will have and it will tell uh, Peko to build the appropriate actor. So if you want to run this project, all you have to do is spin up a terminal and hit dot slash deploy shell. And this will uh, pull up all the Docker images that you need for this project. It may take a little while if you're running this for the first time. I already did this before, so we have all of these logs. So worker three, worker two, and master. So all of these are peco logs. And if you want to run the actual project, there is a little application called a simulator, which will send HTTP requests to this system. And we have a bunch of examples here. So this is just an, uh, a little actor system that sends HTTP requests at localhost 8080 lang python, and it will pick a random bit of code out of several options. One is memory intensive to allocate a bunch of things to CPU intensive that it is going to put in some computation uh, randomly. Uh, a random thing, so a random number generator, and a simple computation to just print a bunch of things from one to 500. And you can also run your own commands. For example, I'm going to take this Python code out. I'm going to create a little file. So let me create a little file, not scratch directory. I'm going to create a new simple.py. And I'm not going to add it here. So not source main, but I'm going to take it out to root like this. And in simple.py, I'm going to paste this exact code like this. And under another terminal, I'm going to do HTTP post, or you can do curl, or you can use any sort of um, HTTP uh, like Postman uh, uh, application. So HTTP post localhost 8080 slash lang slash Python. And I'm going to read from this simple.py, like this. And look at that. We have the output of the actual Python code. And uh, the output is uh, given back to us as an HTTP response. So you can see some logs here. I think I can trace it, maybe. Look at that. We have an uh, actor that created this particular file, Python dash, and this is a random number, and this is the actual code for i in range 1 500 print number plus string of i. So this is the actual thing that was stored inside this worker dash one 
Docker container, and we got the response back as an HTTP response. So with this particular project, you can actually run a remote code execution engine like HackerRank or LeetCode or things of that sort. Now, there's also a little application uh, in the code that I just showed you that created uh, the random code. And there's a bunch of machinery here just to measure the time it takes for the system to respond. And if I run the simulator, it sends actually quite a lot of uh, code. So every single line that you see here is actually a remote code execution request for a particular random choice out of these uh, instances. And if I go back to the local, you can tell, let me go back, look at that, the, the system is actually crunching all of this code inside all of these Docker containers and uh, all of these workers are crunching in turn. So let me go back to the application and uh, let me go stop that. And if I stop that and uh, take a look at the cluster, notice that the cluster has stopped as well. So you can play around with this code. I think the project is actually quite nice. So there you have it, folks, a nice project that illustrates all the major features of Apache Peco, including streams and actors in a cluster and Peco HTTP and so on and so forth. And the application can actually be used to execute code remotely. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, go ahead and click the like button for me and subscribe to the Rock the JVM channel for more videos like this. And check out the article for this video, as well as the hundreds of other articles that I've written over the Rock the JVM blog and at the hundreds of hours of pretty much everything I've put out about Scala and Aka and Peco and Cat's Effect and Kotlin and pretty much everything in between. So until next time, folks, this is Daniel signing off.